Currently, Donald Trump holds a 1% lead over Joe Biden in the popular vote, with Joe Biden's approval rating continuing to drop now to below 40%. Not great numbers for Biden, considering he won the popular vote over Trump in 2020 by a margin of 4.5%. But how would that reflect on an electoral map? In today's video, we will find out. So we're going to be filling in this map in alphabetical order, starting with the first state here, the state of Alabama. In the state of Alabama here, J Joe Biden is down by about 20% over Donald Trump. Not that surprising, we will give the state to Trump by a safe margin. Now going to the next state, the state of Alaska. Alaska, some polls have showed it within single digits. Others have showed it at 23%. Now you do need 50% to win outright in the state of Alaska because they have the ranked choice voting system. But nevertheless, this is still a safe state for Donald Trump. Now going to the next state here, which will be the state of Arizona. Arizona has Trump up by 3.6% over Joe Biden. Not the greatest numbers for Biden, considering 2020, Biden was ahead in the polling aggregate by 2.6 points, but ended up only winning by 0.3%. Nevertheless, when we look at this map here, that does go to a lean column for Donald Trump in the Electoral College map. Again, this is consistent with Biden's downfall in his approval rating, as well as the generic ballot. You can see that Trump has been leading in every single poll, except one by data orbit, so, which is not generally a very, you know, reliable poster because they don't have a lot of polls in general. Now going to the next state here, the state of Arkansas. Unsurprisingly, Donald Trump maintains a healthy lead over Joe Biden by about 28%. That does give the state to Donald Trump by a safe margin. Now going to the next state here, the state of California. Joe Biden has a 20% lead here over Donald Trump, with Kennedy hovering around 10%. Although that might look like a pretty decent lead, do keep in mind that Biden won the state of California back in 2020 by almost 30%. So that is essentially almost a 10% drop. If that holds, that is not a good sign for Biden because that means Biden will lose about a net 1.6 million votes in the popular vote, assuming that holds. We also, we also only see that Joe Biden is at 50%, not the highest number for an incumbent president, considering he was at 63.5% in 2020. Now going to Colorado here, another semi-competitive state. Right now, according to the polls, Trump has about a 7-8% advantage. That is not surprising, however, that is still again a slip off for Joe Biden as he won the state by 13.5 points in 2020. It was one of the states that shifted the most towards Biden back in the 2020 election. This election, it seems like it may have shifted a bit more towards Donald Trump. Anyways, Colorado is in the likely blue column. Now going to the next state here, the state of Connecticut. In the state of Connecticut here, unsurprising, Joe Biden does hold about a 13% lead or a 12% lead over Donald Trump, just sufficient for the state to go for a, again, another safe margin for Joe Biden, considering a safe margin is just over 12%, and Biden's just over a 12% lead over Donald Trump here. Now going to the state of Delaware, Joe Biden's home state, there are no credible posters in the state of Delaware. We see that there are two posters that, that are, again, sponsored by John Zogby Strategies, which is sponsored by RFK Jr., which shows that Biden only has a 4% lead over Kennedy. However, again, that's not a Biden versus Trump poll, and that I would take these polls with a grain of salt, considering they only feature two candidates and not three. So the state of Delaware still goes to Tr uh, Joe Biden by a safe margin, with Trump at second place and not Kennedy. Going to the next area here, the District of Columbia. In the District of Columbia, we don't have a polling aggregate. However, Joe Biden won the district by more than 85%. So it's obviously going to go for Joe Biden. There's no surprise to that whatsoever. DC easily goes to Joe Biden. Now going to Florida here, this was a semi-competitive race. In fact, back in 2020, Joe Biden led the polling aggregate by 2.5 points and at its peak by 7.4%. However, Donald Trump obviously won the state of Florida and pretty much shocked the nation and even many conservative pundits by winning the state by 3.3, including performing very well in Miami-Dade County, where really the people are. So we do have the state of Florida here in the 2024 cycle. Trump has a 9.6% lead and has been leading by roughly that margin in pretty much all of the pollsters. And it's unsurprising right now that Donald Trump will end up carrying the state of Florida by a likely margin. Now going to the next state here, th that will be the state of 
Georgia, I believe. So in the state of Georgia, this is a crucial state. This was a state that Joe Biden was able to carry back in 2020. This is a must win for Donald Trump and does not look too good right now for Joe Biden in the polling aggregate. As Joe Biden does have trails by about six points over Donald Trump, with Trump at 45% despite the fact that RFK is in the polling mix. So what we see here is that Trump has a consistent lead over Joe Biden in terms of the polling aggregate. We see that Trump has held a lead in pretty much every single pollster and that Georgia, what really determines elections in Georgia, are these suburban counties like Henry County, Newton County, right, Gwinnett County, Cobb County, some of those counties, right? And those are areas that have heavily shifted away from Democrats. Republicans and towards Democrats, but we might see some of that reversion as well as just generally high turnout for Republicans in the state for Trump to end up winning this state of Georgia here, probably according to the polls at least by a likely margin of about 6%. So next day here, the state of Hawaii, unsurprisingly, Joe Biden is leading in Hawaii, though by a relatively slim and concerning margin. We see that, again, this is a very bad margin for Joe Biden. Joe Biden won the state of Hawaii back in 2020 by a margin of close to 30 points. Barack Obama won the state of Hawaii by closer to 40-something points. And right now, both the polls right now have Trump up by down by just a couple points. The poll that is more supportive towards Joe Biden and more lenient towards him still has him at just 19%, with Trump already at 38%, given the fact that there are still some undecideds. That is not looking good for Joe Biden. Nevertheless, we do obviously have the state of Hawaii going to Joe Biden by a safe margin. Now going to next state here, the state of Idaho. Unsurprisingly, in Idaho, Trump has about a 26% advantage, easily goes to Donald Trump. Going to the next state here, the state of Illinois. Some of the polls have actually had this as quite competitive compared to what some of the other margins are. Previously, the state voted for Biden by 17, voted for some of the previous Democratic candidates by a larger margin. Right now, Biden is only up by about 13 in the polling aggregate, but still sufficient for a safe margin. Now going to the next state here, which will be the state of Indiana. In Indiana here, Trump does hold a lead over Joe Biden by about 20 points when you average the two Emerson College polls together. Unsurprisingly, Donald Trump will win the state of Indiana, which boosts him to 90 electoral college votes over Joe Biden at 46. Trump has pretty much won every competitive state except the state of Colorado, if you deem it as somewhat competitive. Going to the state of Iowa here, this was a contested race back in 2020, especially back in 2016, right? Polls actually had this neck and neck. 2020, that was a similar story. Trump won both this, both of those times by 9 and 8% respectively. Trump is leading by about what, 11%, which is just under a likely margin here, just under a safe margin. And in fact, Des Moines Register, which is historically very accurate in the state of Iowa, has Trump up by 15 points. That is a significant margin. Nevertheless, here, the overall trend here is that Trump is up by about 11 to 12, which is just under a safe margin. Going to the next state here, the state of Kansas. In the state of Kansas here, we see that Donald Trump is winning by about, what, 13, 14 points. That is just sufficient for a safe margin here for Donald Trump. Going to the next state here, the state of Kentucky. Unsurprisingly, Kentucky does end up going to Donald Trump in the polling aggregate by just over 20%. Going to the next state here, the state of Louisiana. In the state of Louisiana here, we actually see a couple of competitive polls relative to where it was in 2020. Joe Biden lost the state by about 20%, 19%. But right now, the polls have it at about 15%. Nevertheless, here, obviously, Donald Trump will win the state of Louisiana by a safe margin, giving Trump 118, while Joe Biden falls far behind at 46. And in fact, I just realized I did miss the state of California. I'm very sorry about that. But in the state of California here, I did not characterize it. It was a Biden plus a Biden plus 20% margin. I'm very sorry for that error. Anyways, the next state here is the state of Maine. In the state of Maine here, we do have RFK uh, Jr. in this poll ahead of both Joe Biden and Donald Trump. But again, that is somewhat irrelevant in this state of in this election, right? We know that Kennedy is not going to be not Joe Biden or Donald Trump is not going to drop out of this race. And when we look at the other polls here, we see that there are a couple polls which suggest that Joe Biden is up in some and Donald Trump is up in the others. The most recent poll has Trump up by six. The oldest poll 
by Emerson College did have it as Biden plus 11. When we average it out, we, we see that Trump is up by about a safe margin in the second district. Biden is up by a safe margin in the first district. And just in general, in the average at, at large vote, I'm still going to give it to Biden by a tilt margin when we average out the polls. Going to the state of Maryland, in the state of Maryland here, not surprising, Joe Biden holds a significant lead over the Republican candidate, Donald Trump. But again, the margin is a bit slimmer than what Biden wants it to be. Biden won the state by essentially 32 points, 33 points as a matter of fact, by better than a 2 to mar one margin. Right now, however, he does not have that luxury, only leading by about 20% when you average all the polls out. He has a 12% underperformance, though when we look at the Maryland Senate primary and just presidential primary, the uncommitted vote was not that high. Nevertheless, here, Maryland in the safe blue column, but only by a relatively slimmer margin than some of the other previous elections. Head to the state of Massachusetts, where we see that Joe Biden is up by an average of about 24 to 25%. However, that is quite a bit short of the about a 33% victory or again more than a 2 to 1 margin in the state of Massachusetts Joe Biden enjoyed back in 2020. So we're still going to put it in the safe blue column. Now going to next state here, the state of Michigan. Michigan is absolutely a must win here for Joe Biden. It was a state he flipped by the largest margin both in terms of raw vote and percentage wise against Trump back in 2020. What we're seeing right now, however, is a lead for Donald Trump. Quite concerning for Biden, considering he held about a 7 to 8% lead in 2020 and can pretty much consistently held that lead for the about four months to five months leading up to the election. Right now, just at the start of the campaign, Joe Biden already is down by 0.8%. When we look at some of the recent polls here, the New York Times Siena College polls have Joe Biden le leading with likely voters, but down with re real voters. We see that the state is quite competitive, but nevertheless, we do see that, again, Joe Biden is nearly trailing Donald Trump. And that is not a good sign for Biden, considering Michigan is a must win for Joe Biden, no doubt about that. Now going next state here, another back-to-back -back competitive state, the state of Minnesota. How Minnesota is a bit different. We see that Joe Biden does have a lead in the majority of polls that have been taken. And even one internal by Donald Trump shows that Joe Biden and Donald Trump are tied. McMullen and, Oso uh, and Associates is not the most credible poster. Nevertheless, here we look at the results. Trump is leading in his own internals. But realistically, I don't think Trump will win the state just based on the data and and in fact, I do believe Biden will end up winning the state of Minnesota, as the majority of the polls do suggest. I'm going to put Minnesota in the lean Democratic column, because again, there are polls suggesting that Trump will end up winning the state in 2024. Going to Mississippi here, Trump holds about a 18% lead in the one poll taken. That is consistent with his 2020 20 election victory, which now puts him at 140 electoral votes more than halfway there to the presidential n nomination, while Joe Biden still sits at 134. Going to the next state here, the state of Missouri. In the state of Missouri, unsurprisingly, Trump holds about a 15% lead. Consistent with his 2020 performance in the state, he will win the state of Missouri here by about a safe margin. Going to the next state here, which is the state of Montana. Montana, we do have here Trump up by about 20%. And that's obviously going to go for Trump by a safe margin. Going to the next thing here, the state of Nebraska. Nebraska's at large obviously is going to go for Donald Trump. That is not surprising. About a 18% margin this poll, 16% in the other. We've seen the Nebraska's second congressional district with public policy polling a pretty much sponsored by an independent. This is quite interesting for the Nebraska 2nd Congressional District. This is very interesting because Dan Osborne is essentially running as the Democrat because, again, there's no Democrat running for that seat, and he's essentially pretty much siding with the Democrats. What we see here is that Democrats are up by 3% in the state of Nebraska. Uh, Republicans are up by 3% in Nebraska's 2nd District. We all know that the other districts will go for Trump by safe margins, so this district will be lean in the Republican column. We head to the state of Massachusetts, where we see that Joe Biden is up by an average of about 24 to 25 percent. 
However, that is quite a bit short of the about a 33% victory, or again more than a 2 to 1 margin in the state of Massachusetts Joe Biden enjoyed back in 2020. So we're still going to put it in the safe blue column. Now going to the next state here, the state of Michigan. Michigan is absolutely a must win here for Joe Biden. It was a state he flipped by the largest margin, both in terms of raw vote and percentage-wise against Trump back in 2020. What we're seeing right now, however, is a lead for Donald Trump. Quite concerning for Biden, considering he held about a 7-8% to 8 lead in 2020 and can pretty much consistently held that lead for the about 4 months to 5 months leading up to the election. Right now, just at the start of the campaign, Joe Biden already is down by 0.8%. When we look at some of the recent polls here, the New York Times Siena College polls have Joe Biden le leading with likely voters, but down with re real voters. We see that the state is quite competitive, but nevertheless, we do see that, again, Joe Biden is narrowly trailing Donald Trump. And that is not a good sign for Biden, considering Michigan is a must win for Joe Biden, no doubt about that. Now going next state here, another back-to-back -back competitive state, the state of Minnesota. How Minnesota is a bit different. We see that Joe Biden does have a lead in the majority of polls that have been taken. And even one internal by Donald Trump shows that Joe Biden and Donald Trump are tied. McMullen and, Oso uh, and Associates is not the most credible poster. Nevertheless, here we look at the results. Trump is leading in his own internals, but realistically, I don't think Trump will win the state just based on the data. And, if, and in fact, I do believe Biden will end up winning the state of Minnesota, as the majority of the polls do suggest. I'm going to put Minnesota in the lean Democratic column because, again, there are polls suggesting that Trump will end up winning the state in 2024. Going to Mississippi here, Trump holds about a 18% lead in the one poll taken. That is consistent with his 2020 20 election victory, which now puts him at 140 electoral votes, more than halfway there to the presidential nomination, while Joe Biden still sits at 134. Going to the next state here, the state of Missouri. In the state of Missouri, unsurprisingly, Trump holds about a 15% lead, consistent with his 2020 performance in the state. He will win the state of of Missouri here by about a safe margin. Going to the next state here, which is the state of Montana. Montana, we do have here Trump up by about 20%, and that's obviously going to go for Trump by a safe margin. Going to the next state here, the state of Nebraska. Nebraska's at large, obviously, is going to go for Donald Trump. That is not surprising. About a 18% margin in this poll, 16% in the other. We see in the Nebraska's second congressional district with public policy polling a pretty much sponsored by an independent. This is quite interesting for the Nebraska second congressional district. This is very interesting because Dan Osborne is essentially running as the Democrat because, again, there's no Democrat running for that seat. And he's essentially pretty much siding with the Democrats. What we see here is that Democrats are up by 3% in the state of Nebraska. Uh, Republicans are by 3% in Nebraska's 2nd District. We all know that the other uh, districts will go for Trump by safe margins, so this district will be lean in the Republican column. If anything, you'd expect such a, such a poster to indicate a Biden victory, but right now it's in indicating a Trump victory. Nevada, here we have back-to-back -back competitive races again. This was a race that Clinton was able to win back in 2016, and pretty much the most dangerous state for Joe Biden as a Clinton state back in 2016. And it's unsurprising right now, at least, that uh, Donald Trump does hold a lead over Joe Biden, but quite a substantial one at that. Trump holds about a quite a high single-digit victory lead in the state of Nevada. We only have a couple more states to go, so moving on here to the state of South Dakota. Unsurprisingly, in South Dakota, Trump still enjoys a healthy lead over Joe Biden by about 23% on average. So we do have the state of North Dakota, uh, South Dakota going to Trump by a safe margin. Going to Tennessee here, this is not surprising either. Trump does hold about a 25% lead over Biden. That is a, another safe margin. We have the entire Deep South now going to Donald Trump. Again, that is not a surprise whatsoever. Going to the state of Texas here, this is needed for Biden to end up saving this Electoral College map, where Trump is already at 250 Electoral College votes. 
but he will not do that as the state of Texas does go red to Donald Trump by an average of about 10% according to the polling. Now that is about a 4% increase from his 5.6% victory over Biden back in 2020. Now, 5.6% is not the most impressive for a Republican, but he was able to do very, very well in the Rio Grande Valley, while Biden did make some pretty substantial improvements in the suburban areas. Anyways, a 10% victory would be very good for the former president, putting him at 290 electoral votes or the presidency. However, we still have a couple states left to go, so going to now to the state of Utah, Utah is more competitive in a couple of the other polls. Now, Noble Predicted Insights does have it as about a 26% gap. Again, that's not super surprising. That is closer and more resembling to what I believe the actual results will be, but the Mormon population could end up narrowing the state a little bit. Regardless, the state of Utah is safe right now for Donald Trump on the Electoral College map. Now, going to the state of Vermont. In the state of Vermont here, we do have Joe Biden up against Donald Trump by 30%. In the polls, that is a head-to-head -head between Biden and Trump. Anyways, the state of, of um, Vermont goes to Joe Biden by a safe margin, putting Joe Biden at above 200 electoral votes as of right now. Now, going to the state of Virginia here. In the state of Virginia here, Joe Biden maintains a consistent lead over Donald Trump. I don't believe Trump has ever led in a single poll, though there have been some even polls. Anyways, Biden does lead over Trump. That's not surprising. Even the uh, Trump-funded polls in Virginia show Trump show Biden with a lead over Donald Trump and Trump at a narrow deficit. Anyways, however, we do see that Joe Biden is up in the state of Virginia, though by relatively narrow margins. So I'm going to put it in the lean Democratic column, which means the state is technically still in play, though I believe Trump's actual probability of winning the state is quite low. Going to the next state here, the state of Washington. Washington, unsurprisingly, is in the Biden column in some of the earlier polls. However, this is huge, right? Trump is up by five in uh, in the Independent Center poll with the Buff Lynch group, and Trump was up by one in the other poll, the one-on-one -on -one poll. So is this credible? I don't believe so. Just in general, Joe Biden will win the state of Washington because how how blue the area is red king county seattle that's like a third of the state's population and joe biden won 75 percent of the vote there right those are huge numbers to overcome regardless the state could be a bit closer and it could be a warning sign that biden's not doing as well with some of the urban voters but generally speaking biden got like eight percent of the voters there voted uncommitted that's actually quite a low number he has nothing to be worrying about but considering how the just the polling aggregate is I'm going to have to put it in the likely or even the lean blue column as of right now because the most recent poll has Trump up by 5%. Now three of the last uh, less, uh, last states to go here, all starting off with AW, Wyoming, Wisconsin, as well, and West Virginia. So West Virginia does end up having a significant Trump lead in the polling aggregate. Trump leads West Virginia by 30%. Going to the next state here, the state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a must-win for Joe Biden, essentially. If he, he needs to win the presidency through really one realistic pathway, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. He has a chance in Arizona. He has a relatively slim chance in Georgia and North Carolina. Wisconsin is his best route. And Trump does still have a 1.2% lead over Joe Biden. Last time we checked it, Biden actually held a narrow lead, essentially. And what we're seeing is a mix of polls. The New York Times Siena College poll does have Biden with a 2% lead in terms of the real voters. But likely voters, Trump still has a 1% lead over Joe Biden. And essentially, this state is going to be very competitive. Abortion is a big issue here. But when we're looking at the picture in general, we see that, again, the economy is still hurting some of the voters. And that this state was decided by 20,000 votes in 2020. So really, Trump has a good chance of flipping this state of Wisconsin back. Anyways, it's in the tilt Republican column. West, uh, Wyoming here, we don't really need to look at that, but we will. Wyoming does go for Trump here by a safe margin, 53 percentage points, the largest margin out of every state. So that gives you the map here, 225 for Joe Biden, 213 for Donald Trump. Okay, so when we filled in the map here, what does this mean? Well, first off, Donald Trump is expected to win according to polling. In fact, he's going to do better than his 2016 number, and he does lead in the popular vote here by 
nationally, which would be huge news for Donald Trump. That'd be very good for a Republican. Nevertheless, here, Trump, Joe Biden does have a realistic pathway of victory through Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Nebraska's 2nd District, putting him at exactly 270. However, right now, polls do suggest that that is not the most probable outcome and that Trump is definitely favored, which I do agree. Again, Joe, Trump has locked up a lot of the southern states, right? Nevada, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, Texas, Arizona. He has locked up pretty much all of them, with the exception of maybe Arizona, where the race is still competitive. But four points is still a pretty large gap, just barely within the margin of error. Anyways, right now, in summary, it, it does look good for Donald Trump. But again, Joe Biden still has a realistic pathway of victory, though it does look quite slim as the days drag on. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.